different neighborhoods and you get to check out what off plan means and also how you can be able to own an apartment at very affordable prices with universal affordable housing A very good day to you. How are you doing, Universal Affordable Housing Family, aka Affordable Housing Uganda? My name is Patience Ahomza, and we are back yet again on another interesting segment of how to acquire a real estate investment in the right means. We shall be discussing more about a condominium association, condominium title, and at large condominium law the details of a condominium law, the details of a condominium association and how to actually acquire the right title while getting your real estate investment on board. So please do keep with us on this segment. I shall be right back with you with more on which kind of person you're going to be discussing with today. Join us every Tuesday at 3 p.m. and every Fridays at 3 p.m. on Senu FM. We bring to you our various projects in the various neighborhoods at very affordable prices. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is a wonderful day here at Universal Affordable Housing. My name is Patience and as usual, we always have experts on our interview of the week here at Affordable Housing Uganda. It is an honor for you to be a part of us today and as usual, well, of course, you've been, you and I have now been a family. You and the company of Universal Purpose Enterprises have been a family, and it is because of your support that we are thriving. Now, today we are interviewing uh, Edwin Tabaro, a partner at KTA Advocates, who is going to be telling us more about uh, condominium law and condominium titles and all the lot to do with, you know, acquiring a condominium apartment. Welcome, Edwin. How are you? Yeah, thank you very much, Fishers. How is uh, this uh, afternoon? The, it's okay and though quite hot but uh, it's a bright day okay yes. so let's get straight into it we are discussing that law applies in all sectors of you know society and real estate is is, is a part of those sectors 
So we've heard about the condominium law here and there, but we never really got to know what does this condominium law entail and what are the guidelines that apply to a Ugandan acquiring a condominium? Uh, we've got to understand, first of all, what a condominium is. Uh, condominium is basically uh, multiple units with the individual units owned by separate, uh, owned by individuals, but with separate ownership. Mm. So generally speaking, it's a block. And uh, the ones that are most famous are uh, well known, are Bugolovi, uh, white and brown flats in Bokoto, mm -hmm. Wandegea. Uh, these are the... And also universal affordable housing. And, and <laughs> these, these are the ones that were the world first yes. until we came now to the new private uh, developers, yeah. which includes uh, Universal. Yeah. I think very many have come up. Mm. Uh, these, these are what one is known as condominiums. The law just came up in 2012, mm. but uh, um, it's a new concept really in Uganda. However, it's very famous in big cities, high populated cities, but organized housing. Mm. I think that's the whole concept. You can have as many people uh, in one place, but very well organized and near very many amenities uh, without necessarily having crowds in, in the same place mm. and avoid things like bungalows spread out. Nairobi is one such place that is, is, is well built with condos all over. Mm. So uh, basically that's what condominiums are. So the law uh, came into place just recently, 2012. We have regulations that uh, uh, also guide the acquisition, the management and the operation of the condominium act mm -hmm. um, it's it's really meant to uh, provide for uh, an organized way in which these uh, properties are acquired okay. leased sold mortgaged and and managed so I believe it's a very progressive law and uh, considering now we have many cities in Barara, Masaka, Fort Potter and Kampala which is uh, always growing and the need for young people to uh, stay in organized places and close to their workplaces mm the law uh, came into in, in at the right time to organize and to provide. Okay, I understand that law that ha it has got many, many regulations, but what are some of the you know crucial pointers or elements that would guide a person in acquiring a condominium without being you know duped or defrauded like how it is happening in most of okay. the areas? Very well. One, I believe it is safer than all other land tenure systems. Mm. Uh, one, it provides for individual ownership and it also provides for acquisition of a title. Those are the very salient features. Mm -hmm. So in your flat or condo, you have a title to it, different from all other person. But something salient about it is that there is separate ownership and the boundaries should be well demarcated by the person who is selling. For example, Universal, before they set it up, they do share with the authorities the condominium plan, mm -hmm. which clearly sets out the, 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 the boundaries. And the boundaries are very simple. The ceiling, the walls, sometimes even the doors can separate owner or, or the ownership from any other person. Thirdly and most importantly is shared spaces, mm -hmm. which is even uh, provided for by the Act. Uh, things like amenities, I mean you have electricity, utilities basically, but then there are also parking areas, there are also play areas, uh, these are, uh, and for affordable housing they even go on to provide for gyms, mm. provide for swimming pools. Mm. These are also uh, very salient and can also be owned by the individual owner. But So they are in in part of that, they are also in the title. I uh, mean Absolutely. What happens is you have your individual title, mm -hmm. but it's clear demarcated as a condominium, which infers ownership over the shared spaces. Okay. So, for example, if you went to Bogolobi, you'll find uh, 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 huge play areas. If you own just your individual title, it does not mean that the play area that you're seeing and the parking and the road is not part of, is not part of it. No, no, absolutely not. It's a very sophisticated way of, hand, of owning property, but giving you access certain areas you would not have if you just had just the condo. Okay. So it, it's an amazing way of, 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 of accessing, of getting property with amenities. With amenities. Yeah, so amenities is one of the things provided for under the condominium, under the condominium law. Okay. Yes. So you talked of, um, after the person has purchased a property, 
Well, you have all of these other amenities that are also part of your title. They are you know, listed in your title as well. Uh, is the person able to pay any other fees apart from just the purchase uh, fee? Are there any other fees that a person is going to pay after they purchase the property? Absolutely. One other salient feature is that uh, uh, the Act provides for the formation of what they call a corporation. Mm -hmm. Under the Act, the word is corporation. And if you go to affordable housing and very many... Uh, modern and organized uh, uh, companies that do these developments, they, 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 you'll sign not just a sale agreement, but you'll also sign an agreement accepting the corporation. So the corporation is provided for, and the corporation, its major purpose is to manage some of those shared spaces we are talking about. The lifts for affordable housing, they even have lifts. These are what would, uh, would be paid for. Mm -hmm. Naturally, for you to manage these things, I mean, the things like refuse, uh, people have to pick them, and this has to be paid for. The, 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 the maintenance of the play areas, the gyms and swimming pools, all these have to be paid for. So you're an owner, but uh, I mean, it's just like the person who has a bungalow, he has his compound, he has the refuse to collect, all that he pays for. So all these are channeled through the corporation, but I see many people calling in get the condominium association yes yes but they have to pay condominium fees <laughs> exactly they call it condominium fees but uh, yeah. the law provides for a corporation and uh, it's working i see it working everywhere and uh, the other thing that we, we need to you know discuss if a client has purchased an apartment and maybe after the after everything is completed you've got your title you send a sales agreement and then you find something faulty in this situation who is liable for you know the repairs is it the person who has bought or is it the developer before you purchase a property whether condominium or another you have to do due diligence mm -hmm. so what happens is if you're a buyer a prospective buyer and you are uh, looking at buying something from affordable housing uh, or universal properties or any other company mm -hmm. you expect it to go to the land registry KCCR, and then uh, retrieve the condominium plan okay so um you buy or whatever is offered has to be subject to the specifications that you've already done if you don't do it and you discover there are changes uh, or there are plans that they had uh, represented to you by word but uh, you did not cross check the law protects the the the, the seller okay yeah you as a person who is buying land you expected to do due diligence but in the event that uh, during the construction plans change mm -hmm. and they don't inform you you uh, ideally would be expected to get uh, 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 perhaps uh, further due diligence but in such a case uh, I, I believe it's excusable if you didn't do it because they would have changed the plan but without letting you know so in that case the seller would have to yeah, pay yeah absolutely the seller but uh, one thing we've got to understand is that in a condominium projects they are safer from all other projects and define the sense that you don't just change plan you don't just wake up one morning and do it mm -hmm. everything is subject to approval and because they they uh, uh, house many people city authorities or the town authorities are usually more cautious and they do more more, more surveillance okay. than someone who'd be building perhaps a bungalow somewhere very fine kira uh, th th that is that is it's a different story. It's a different story. <laughs> but condominiums, generally speaking, are safer when it comes to buying subject to subscription. The 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 advice is for the client mm. to always do due, due diligence, diligence and get that condominium plan. Okay. I have done it myself. I have seen what affordable <laughs> housing does. Mm. I, s I have their plans for almost every project. Oh wow! Yes. Due diligence. <laughs> Due diligence, indeed. Okay, then the other thing that uh, most people who are clients out there who are actually watching us, they always have a problem. Universal Affordable Housing has got, uh, you know, the mother title, and then it has these other titles for these very many units, but in Universal Affordable Housing names, I think. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. So when you're trying to put this title in your name as a client, how much does it take? Is it, some, is it a constant figure? Is it a different figure? Because we have got people who ask, how much will I have to pay for this to, uh, to change the title from this to my real name or to someone else's? Well, of course, uh, when you talk about transfer of title, mm. you go beyond the condominium law. We have what we call the registration of, 
of, of Titles Act, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, provides for the transfer and management of basically transactions in land. Mm. So condominium provides for the setup and development, but when it comes to spur, pledging, or whatever form of transaction, the RTA comes into force. That's What's the Registration that? of Titles Act. Okay. So it provides for transfer, and uh, uh, the major fees are really the stamp duty, mm -hmm. which is usually 1.5% of the value. So if your land is about 200 million shillings, you have to pay uh, that percentage when, or whoever has bought has to pay 1.5% uh, of the value for, 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 for that particular property. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there are also what we would call transfer fees, mm -hmm. some of which are charged by the local authority of the, of, 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 which pretends over the, 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 the place. So if it is, uh, say, Peacock Apartments in Nigeria or, 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 or Swan Apartments, that would be Wakiso. Okay. So Wakiso charges, I think, 10,000 shillings for every transfer. And then there are other charges of about 20,000, 20,000. Okay. Yeah, they are quite small, but the biggest is the 1.5%, the mm. which is the stamp duty. Oh, okay. If you're mortgaging, there are also fees from the bank. The bank. <laughs> yes. But all these... <laughs> Uh, under the RTA and because a condominium property is just like a milo, mm. it is just like a freehold, it's just like a leasehold. Mm. It's the same as any other kind of title. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So usually when uh, I've, I've heard you've mentioned few apartments, you're very familiar with these projects from what I've been hearing. Uh, we have got uh, people who come into these apartments, the landlords who buy these apartments. And then they're supposed to form sort of a condominium association. How does that come about? Is there are there procedures forming that association? Is it just landlords who come together and say, okay, now we have bought this project and let us now form a, they have a manager? How does it all work? The Condominium Act provides for the uh, formation of such mm -hmm. what you're calling an association. It provides for a corporation, which is meant to manage mm -hmm. the that property and uh, from what I see their main focus is the shared uh, the, sh the common areas basically things that would entail maintenance and require money so this association also has structures under the law with the chairman secretary treasurer and all that sometimes I have seen from those that we are formerly public owned properties the Bugolovis and the like mm -hmm. they vote and form an association. An association. Uh, from the private developers, they're even more sophisticated. Yes, indeed, you can have chairpersons and all that, but uh, the, the management structure is such that they have property managers. Mm. So the law provides that these people be, that this kind of, as of association be formed, and it's mandatory. Purposely because one has got to manage those shared resources. Yeah, the amenities. And amenities. Things and can get out of hand when they're not managed. <laughs> and uh, that's the beauty <laughs> of uh, condominiums. I've seen in uh, countries like Dubai, London, Singapore, mm. they even go ahead to provide meals. So you oh. have, yes. So you ha it's, it's almost a hotel uh, of some sort. Of some sort. Uh, where you, 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 you're at your apartment, if you're missing out something, you call downstairs, they bring it. Some have canteens yes. or, or shops, supermarkets, coal, and everything is delivered to it's you. It's done for you. It's done for it's you. A co it's a good com type of community. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing community. Mm. Uh, uh, sometimes, of course, depending on the product, it could be luxury living. Mm. And I think it's coming to Uganda. I see the project in Kololo is close to that. Yeah. So is Muyenga. And there are many others I've seen somewhere in Lobowa that have those kind of facilities. So the, the association is very good. It's uh, provided by law and it, it's good to be there. You can't have a condominium without the association. Uh, as we conclude, in your opinion, uh, how would you say universal affordable housing has impacted the law society in Uganda? Well, I'm not sure about uh, 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 my colleagues benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. I don't have the numbers. But uh, one, in terms of practice, I think we clearly see very aggressive developers and uh, I am certain some lawyers have started engaging these transactions or have advised clients 
uh, uh, who have bought or who are selling, uh, who are even mortgaging, uh, I believe the impact is now being felt. We can now see the real organized uh, uh, condominium projects that are initiated very well in the law. You don't have trouble. And from me as a lawyer, I can tell you that transacting on a, a property that is of a condominium nature, if, especially if the plan is well organized and it's from one of these well organized places, it's usually very clear, mm. simple, less uh, dangerous, less susceptible to fraud like any other place. Less susceptible yeah, to fraud. It's, <laughs> not, it's less susceptible to mm. fraud because the property is there. The unit owners are clearly seen. Mm. Everything is physically seen, and uh, uh, which is very different from the other properties that uh, all over the place, where you'd have to go back to the land registry. Even this, you can always go back to the land registry, mm. but you can't be certain of the ownership. That is true. You 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 have to verify from neighbors, from uh, LCs, mm. and even when you get the rightful owner. Even among them, if it's a family estate and not formally owned by a deceased person, so many issues. Mm. But with the condo, everything is just as clear as it is. Mm. Once you see it, it's affordable housing, their branding is there. There isn't so much to, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. They give <laughs> you the comfort that you're buying something good, safe, from very honest people. Oh, wow. Yeah. What a conclusion. Thank you so much, Edwin. Well, that was uh, Edwin Tawaro, the, a partner at KTA Advocates, who was sharing with us more about uh, how to acquire a condominium uh, in the right way possible with due diligence. He mentioned of uh, stamp duty and transfer fees in terms of uh, transferring a title from uh, the developers to your names, which is a question that we have received from most of you, our viewers, and I hope that you have had the answers on how affordable housing is truly the way to go in terms of getting a real estate investment. My name is Patience Ahomza. I shall see you again next week. Well, that was uh, our interview with uh, Edwin Tawaro, one of the partners at KTA Advocates. He's been discussing with us more about how to acquire a real estate investment and in particular a condominium apartment in the right means. Some of you have been duped before, some of you have been defrauded with there's very many brokers around the city. But worry not when you follow this segment, if you tag a person who wants to know more about how to acquire an investment in the right means, this would be the right uh, space and platform for you. Now we are moving on to the next segment of our show, which is the property listings of the week. Universal Affordable Housing has got property all around Kampala at the moment and in hopes of expanding to the other areas in Uganda. But as of now, we have properties in Miyenga, we have the Pigeon Residency in Miyenga. Currently, we have only a couple of one bedrooms left at uh, 172 million Ugandan shillings. Some of the three and the twos are also still available at uh, 353 million and also 286 million respectively. We have got uh, apartments along the Mgongo Chireka Road. You will find the Swan Residency where the shops in the front have now been completed already and uh, you'll also find that we have got one two and three bedroom apartments in the prices of uh, 115 million for a one bedroom 195 million Ugandan shillings for a two bedroom and also 215 and 219 million Ugandan shillings that is a swan residency along the namgongo chireka road we have got kololo uh, hilltop universal residency here at the kololo hill drive where you'll find that we have got one bedroom unit still available at 325 million. You should come and be the last grabber for those of you who actually want to live the luxury life and also live in a posh area, in an upscale area like Kololo. And also we have got area apartments in Nadia Estates, that is the Canary Enclave and the Kingfisher Apartments that we recently launched as Universal Affordable Housing at very affordable prices as well. And lastly, we have in Nigeria the Flamingo Apartments and Flamingo Estates, sorry, and then also Peacock Apartments just along Acela Hotel. I shall be right back with you after all this. You may please go and uh, call a friend to come and check out these areas. Site visits are free at Affordable Housing Uganda. But for now, bye. I shall be back with you next week.